the media manifestation. Hello, my name is Christy Sims and this is my podcast. To get the official credits out of the way first, it was written by me, recorded by me, edited by me, based on a pretty unoriginal idea of mine. I came up with the music, it's basically all down to me. Except for this episode, as a special guest, I have Elliot Wilde. So welcome to episode two of The Mediocre Manifestation. Now, the dedicated listeners amongst you, that is, those who heard the first episode and then decided to come back for the second, will have noticed that I've used the same theme tune for both episodes. This is because I believe that it contains just the right amount of fanfare for the grand start of an amazing podcast. So all I need to do is improve the podcast to suit the theme tune. Now, it would be no exaggeration to say that I have had some emails concerning the previous episode, but one of them really caught my eye. Someone called Simon wrote in to say that uh, one of the news stories last time was about the CERN Super Collider and a discovery of the Higgs boson. And he's written in to say, I never actually got the Higgs boson until you explained it. I got that it could potentially end the universe, but I never knew that it actually held the universe together. I would just like to point out to everyone that that was a partially true news story but all of the rest were made up and you should have a better source of news and scientific knowledge than this podcast. The other thing I'd like to say, just as a bit of general information, the Higgs boson can't potentially end the universe. It was the uh, CERN super collider that could. It was a very small chance but still it could have destroyed the earth and Personally, I would have thought that, you know, if an action that I could do could have potentially ended the Earth, I would have tried to avoid doing it, not put billions of pounds into researching a way to build a device that could allow it to occur. But that's just me. So coming up next, we have me and Elliot Wilde in conversation. And later on... Following on from the advice about funerals, this week Christie's Etiquette Tips will be giving advice on how to act at dinner occasions, times when you're eating out or even just going to a friend's house, how to avoid some of the social issues that commonly crop up. But before any of that, I have a word for any listeners of a nervous nature. Boo! One of the emails I received accused my humour of being slightly too dry, and I was told I ought to bring some people in to alter the the dynamics of it a bit. Unfortunately, after going through my entire address book, only one person was available enough to uh, agree to appear, and his sense of humour is actually drier than mine. Never mind, here is Elliot Wilde. Hello Elliot, welcome to the podcast. Hello, I'd just like to say one thing. You forced me onto this. You, I didn't. I didn't recommend myself. I, d- I don't think anyone would have recommended you, really. Now, the the plan behind this is to start the conversation vaguely at the beginning, stagger our way to the middle, and then hope we still have sufficient brain power to reach the end. Okay. So, uh, have you got anything you'd like to talk about at all? Why don't we ask each other some questions? All right, then. I have a a little one to kick off. Um, uh, Two big companies in technology. One of them is Microsoft and the other is Apple. Uh, What is your opinion of Apple? 
Well, I think they are utter geniuses. Somehow they've managed to come up with a business plan that includes creating technology that never works. It's unreliable, but looks shiny and nice. And they managed to get millions and millions of people to buy these shiny pieces of rubbish day in, day out, and come back for more whenever they release <laughs> another piece. Um, well, well, I ought to point out in the interest of fairness that there are other con artists on the market. So... Uh, you could buy your rubbish, as it's as Elliot calls it, from any of those as well. Well, uh, that was a that was a fairly complete answer. Th- thanks for giving such a balanced review, just Elliot. You know, out we're... of curi- just out of curiosity, Christy, who who makes your po- popular music device? <laughs> that that would be Apple. Yes. Uh, do you have any questions, Mr. Wild? I have several, but I don't think they're as high high brow as yours. Okay. Uh, we'll cope. If you were going to take something to the moon, what would it be? Ah, now this question comes up again and again, and uh, I think it's quite difficult to answer immediately. Now, uh, gravity is much lower, so would you take, for example, to get paid to take a uh, a fat fighter's class, and then when they weigh themselves, they've lost four fifths of their weight, and Bingo! You get millions of people signing up for your program. Or would you, as one of the astronauts did, take a golfing set so you can get the record for how far you can hit something? Um, I think, personally, I would take uh, the Olympic weights. You know, the weightlifting at the Olympics? I would, yeah. take, I would take those and then film myself lifting the, uh, the huge weights and claim the world record. Of course, I'd get a set to dress it up as just a normal room. Um, but I think that personally, that would be the best use of my time and money, because I'll have spent millions of pounds going to the moon, of course. So, this is vo- th- No, this is... If if you were going to be taken to the moon for free, what would you take? Not if you had to set up your own business and, and somehow make a business model out of it. Oh, right. Uh, anything I wanted. Yes. A- like... A big crackers bar. for all the cheese. A, a big bar of dairy milk, I think. Just just chocolate. You take some chocolate. Out. Well, you know, th- there's no shops up there, Elliot. They haven't got the infrastructure. But so there's cheese. There's che- take, take some crackers. Someone else who's got their their astrological knowledge from Wallace and Gromit there, I think. Do not be dissing Wallace and Gromit. It is a very good docudrama. Yes, all right. We all love them very dearly, and I believe that there are now several fan clubs uh, dedicated to them. But it has to be said that the facts may not be strictly accurate. I think that's up for discussion. Shall we move on? I think we'd better. If you were going to go a few days without sleep, how would you cope? Oh, a few days without sleep. Well, there's obviously coffee. Coffee. Sugar and coffee. And films. Uh, pins. I would make a mattress entirely out of pins. Because then, you know, you roll over in a night, ow, ooh, that's definitely you, awake again. Or, now this is an idea, uh, an alarm clock constantly going off. Because they're designed to wake you up immediately. So if you have it all the time, you'll always be immediately awake. Do you know what I mean by immediately awake? Yes, yes. So alert. Personally, I... Personally, I, I would just sleep at night. Ah, Personally, I think that's the easy way out. Um, I don't like it. There's nothing in the rules against it, but I think that it's a loophole that's, that's being exploited, and I, I will see it stamped out of the sport. Okay. If you built your own Jurassic Park, would you get a specific dinosaur, and what would it be? Um, a particular di- I mean, we're moving out of my area of expertise, I'll be honest, um, because, you know, I normally stick to drinking Coke, uh, or eating Dairy Milk, or Galaxy, or equally any other chocolate. Don't want to uh, be accused of brand placement there. <coughs> Panasonic. Um, but dinosaurs, well, I don't know. I mean, the, Trian- the Tyrannosaurus Rex, assuming it was a business again, Tyrannosaurus Rex... Always there. Kids love it, as long as, you know, you don't get eaten. So the kids that aren't eaten will love it, and they will actually love being able to see the, get the other kids getting eaten, obviously. So th- there's a bit of family value there, isn't there? I mean, parents mm. with children they don't really like. 
they could just sort of leave them slightly behind, covered in maybe uh, uh, Tabasco sauce, you know, just having to, to make sure that the dinosaur really goes for them. I think that the Tyrannosaurus Rex really is the way to go on this one. What about Velociraptors? You could have paintballing with Velociraptors. Paintballing with Velociraptors. Well, I'm just going to find out what a Velociraptor is. They're, oh, they're the little ones with the big tails. They're very fast and they hunt in groups. So they'd be perfect like the opposition on a paintball team. They, they would be perfect as the opposition. Um, I'm worried, though, that uh, the Velociraptors may be hard to train for not biting people. Okay? And paintballing is something I would enjoy doing, and I wouldn't enjoy it as much if I lost a leg. We all, I mean, I suppose we could have... You know, we could have ramps... Wheelchair, wheelchair. Will Veloc- Will Veloc- Velociraptors be happy to use wheelchairs? That is the question. I'll have to do a scientific study. So, if you have any extra money, there's any universities, general appeal, and you would like to see a study as to whether Velociraptors can use wheelchairs, please do donate at the mediocre manifestation dot podbean dot com, and uh, and we will conduct that study for you and get back to you in about. Uh, 60 years, let's say. Ambitious. Okay, so following your... I can't think of the word. Philosophi- philosophical. About, uh, philosophical. Mr. Wilde, how much yeah. you had to drink before you get this evening? Two, two litres. If, okay. if you were in a vehicle going the speed of light, what would happen when you turn on the headlights? Well, if I was in a... Because vi- I actually do have an A-level in physics, so... I know that you can't go the speed of light. So if I was in a car going the speed of light, I would be the, the headlight would be the last thing on my mind. I'd be checking the seat belts, the airbags in case of a crash, trying to steer. I mean, you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to check the headlights. You'd be checking the seat belts and airbags as you're driving along. Well, yeah. Would that not be more dangerous than? Well, uh, but the radio wouldn't work, would it? The radio waves wouldn't catch up with you. So there's no point trying to change this. I suppose you could put a CD on. But um, I don't know. I mean, what song would I play if I was driving at the speed of light? That's a question. Um, I get around, perhaps? Not really sure. Oh, don't stop me now. They talk about travelling at the speed of light. That would, that would be very suitable, I think. What? Why? What? What song would you play? I don't know. I played maybe something slightly more ironic, like "The Speed of Sound" by Coldplay. At least it was by a decent band. Oh, I, th- I think you're uh, treading a very thin line there, and I think it's time to move on to the highlight of our discussion. I believe. This is a mystery surrounding the recent past that has plagued people. What do you think is the biggest issue today preventing the Wombles making a comeback? Global warming. I'm sure all the Wombles are still there, but they're underground. Or There's underground. N- exactly. But it's global warming. Because it's so warm, they don't need any newspapers, so we don't see them going missing, so we don't track down where the newspapers have gone, and we don't find the Wombles. That is true. The Wombles were very reliant on the newspapers being thrown away. So newspaper sales dropping, Wombles' habitation plummeting. This, exactly. This, right. A general appeal now to everyone to buy and throw away newspapers in the street. Do you hear me? You must go get a newspaper. Don't bother reading it. Tear it in half, perhaps. Throw it up in the air. Just to ensure the survival, because so many things are dying out now. There was the dodo, the wombles, they're they're declining. We need to preserve them. But of course, when we do say buy a newspaper, we mean buy a respectable newspaper, not like The Sun. Instead, go for something a little bit more highbrow, such as The Guardian or even maybe The Independent. Um, Well, I don't know, because if you're not going to read it, does it matter? Well, think of the terrible content, and you don't want to be supporting a really terrible newspaper now, do you? Very well. You keep broadcasting your political views. I'm going to try to keep neutral. That way I don't alienate people wishing to sponsor me. So far, you see, I think uh, you may have uh, prevented a rather lucrative deal with Apple. Uh, What operating system do you use to edit this together? Microsoft Windows. Look, moving on. Uh, Do you have any more questions? Aren't all generalisations false? Now, this is a difficult one to answer, and I think personally, yes and no really does cover it. Um, Because on the one hand, yes, they are. But on the other hand, they're not really. 
because, of course, some generalizations aren't accurate, yet others are. So I think I've uh, answered that fully. All right, is that the end of your quiz, Mr. Wilde? Yes, and is it the end of your quiz, Mr. Sims? Uh, yes, it is. So have you got anything you would like to say to the adoring fans or fan before we say goodnight? Yes. Why are you listening to this show? Write in at... The what video is it? The... command base station <laughs> at hotmail.com. Yes. C- can r- I just say... Right the... there and explain why you picked this show to listen to. Just out of pure curiosity and morbid fascination. Can I just say, when trying to encourage people to email in, it's always best to know the email address before starting. But other than that, I think you've done quite well, Elliot. So thank you and goodbye. Good night. Well, here it is, the highlight of the podcast, the most informative and reliable of all social guidance, Christie's Etiquette Tips, this week focusing on going out and eating in restaurants or at people's homes. First of all though, linking back to the previous etiquette tips, I have a piece of news. One of the greatest chefs in history passed away recently. The cremation lasted two hours at gas mark six. Now, whenever you are in a restaurant, do not order any snail dishes. The service will be unacceptably slow as they are encouraged to make it from kitchen to table on their own. If you have ordered some sort of fish and your meal has taken over half an hour, politely ask the management what sort of bait they're using to catch it. Another thing to watch out for is boring people at these social gatherings. If all you do is drone on about your digital watch or where you went for your holiday last year, people will begin throwing parties just to not invite you. Right, let's deal with social talking. If you are in a restaurant, then it is perfectly polite to complain about the food, have it sent back if it's cold or overcooked, and indeed say, Ah, I've ordered the wrong thing really, this is awful. But, and this is a key point, if you go to a friend's house, you cannot say any of these things. Asking for your money back would be particularly offensive. At this point, I feel I must warn you about a scam operating in a local restaurant. It has a sign outside saying, Lobster tails one pound each, or one dollar for our American listeners. Yes, we actually have them. Now, you may think, oh, that's cheap and order them. What you will receive is an old man sitting at your table and saying, Once upon a time there were three lobsters, and continuing in the same style. Don't fall for it. This is the self-same restaurant with the completely incompetent chef. I chose the simplest meal possible, a boiled egg. He held the egg in his hand and boiled his watch. Steer clear. Now, I'm going to share with you a little trick I learned a long time ago for being able to eat pizza. When the waiter asks whether he should cut it into six or twelve pieces, I always say six because I know I'd never be able to eat twelve. Hopefully, these have helped educate you in all things related to going out to eat. And now, I shall move on to my conclusion. This episode has gone on for longer than my 15 minute target which means that I am now wasting time in chunks of a third of an hour. I can only apologise for this, and I will try and compensate by keeping my conclusion as short as I can. I'm going to leave you with quite an interesting thought for this episode. How can you ever tell what a deserted area looks like? Now, if you have an idea on how to answer this, please get in touch by emailing me at themediocremanifestation at hotmail.com or commenting on the blog at themediocremanifestation.podbeam.com or if you just want to give your feedback you can do it there as well. 
Keep an eye on the blog, because that tells you when the next episode will be released. Although, of course, if you've subscribed, it's automatically downloaded for you. The final thing I want to say before signing off was about the conversation between me and Elliot. Unfortunately, I've noticed the audio quality is slightly lower. That was due to the way it was recorded, so that we'd be able to talk. And another thing just to note was that conversation was actually live. Neither of us had heard the questions that the other one was going to ask, so that is our real responses in real time. Thank you for listening, and goodbye until episode three.